Hello and welcome. This is Afshin Ritatsi and Yvonne Ridley joining you from the heart of the English capital on board the world's only floating TV studio. Unbelievable. That sums up the stories that some of our guests have to tell today. They all fall into the you couldn't make it up category. Yes, let's start off with the American civil rights lawyer who was sent to prison for 10 years for defending her clients. And now she is being defended by this man, the world's most celebrated death row inmate who is campaigning for her release. Meanwhile, in Gaza, according to some elements of the Western mainstream media, Palestinians are enjoying a luxury lifestyle. Well, our man on the strip drops by to separate the fact from the fiction. Could mainstream media be belittling the plight of 800,000 Palestinian children? And while Pakistan has been devastated by killer flash floods, which have made millions homeless, where is Asif Ali Zadari? His people think he should be at home with them, but instead he's continued his European tour. All of this and so much more on board HMS President with Ratansi and Ridley. It's the show which rocks the boat. It's often said truth is stranger than fiction, and this is certainly borne out by our first story about one of the most respected civil rights lawyers in the United States. Lynn Stewart is a 70-year-old grandmother and lawyer who was recently sent to prison for violating a prison rule regarded by many as an unconstitutional relic of the discredited War on Terror. Joining us today is Hanifa Sawa from the Islamic Human Rights Commission to talk about this extraordinary case. Hanifa, a 70-year-old grandmother with breast cancer apparently being sent to jail by the American government. What, what's the story? Sheikh Omar was one of the first people who was uh, put under the sands. It was a new initiative. Um, all the lawyers had to sign uh, the, the conditions of the sand to say that they're not going to divulge any information regarding the case to any third party. She was accused uh, of, because she, she released a, uh, a statement by the Sheikh to uh, the party he had founded in, founded in Egypt called al Gama al-Islamiyah. Um, the, the, the details are, they... So basically it was a legal question. What, what is the Islamic Human Rights Commission? What can you do to help the case? And uh, is the case over? Because I think it was an appeal, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So basically she's down in prison. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's where we've got our hands tied. I mean, we've been campaigning for Sheikh Omar since... Uh, I don't think many people would probably probably uh, like uh, the defendant, but I suppose it's the rule of justice that they, they should have legal yeah, representation. Yeah, I mean, whether, whether you like the defendant these, uh, or not, they still are entitled to, to, or to be treated in a humane manner. And the Sands is a way that is um, uh, destroys the... It's, it's like psychological torture. Well, Hanifa, it all looks as though this is designed to intimidate human rights lawyers and and really prevent them from doing their job. But thank you very much for coming in. Thank but the you. IHRC aren't the only ones on uh, this case. My favorite death row correspondent is also outraged by Lynn Stewart's plight. Stewart, the activist lawyer, was recently sentenced to 10 years in prison. This outstanding lawyer, a 70-year-old grandmother, who's facing the serious threat of breast cancer, was originally sentenced to two years and four months, but the Federal Appeals Court apparently felt that wasn't enough. The same appeals court that traditionally reverses the convictions of cops who torture or kill black citizens, who traditionally rely on the judgments of the trial judges, reversed Stewart's sentence as not tough enough. So much for tradition. For Lynn's tradition wasn't that of the Tony tie and tails law firms of Manhattan. She didn't represent the rich, the powerful, the well-heeled. She represented the poor, the oppressed, the dispossessed, the black, the Latino, the Arab, the damned, those whom Franz Fanon called the wretched of the earth. A juxtaposition. Many, many lawyers in the Office of Legal Counsel, in the White House, in the CIA, and the Defense Department violated criminal law the military code, the Geneva Conventions, and the Convention Against Torture to aid and abet violations of law and the Constitution for years. Guess how many of them face trial? Guess how many of them will in future? 
How many of them will ever face prison? None, none, and none. For their crimes were on behalf of the powerful, hence their immunity. And the 70-year-old grandmother, a lawyer, is sent to prison for 10 years for violating a prison rule that is an unconstitutional relic of the so-called war on terror. This is what an empire in decline looks like. From death row, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. Death Row prisoner Mumia Abu Jamal there. If you want to support Lynn Stewart, you can always write to her at the New York Correctional Center. The address will go up on our website, www.retentionridley.com. Some of you gave a double take when U.S. President Barack Obama addressed a room full of Army veterans recently, declaring that the military mission in Iraq was virtually over and would be replaced instead by a civilian effort led by diplomats. Mission accomplished. One of the doubters joins us today. Welcome to Chris Bambury from... Uh